Hi everyone, it's Kino here. Thanks so much for tuning in to this 20 minute beginner yoga class. I'm so grateful to you for practicing together with me. So let's get started with this yoga journey. Come to a comfortable seated position. Close your eyes. Bring your hands together and a nice long deep breath in. As you exhale, rest your hands down to any comfortable position, keeping the mind quiet and calm. Be aware of your breath. Be aware of your body. Be aware of the quality of your mind and your emotions, allowing those three points of awareness to anchor the mind in this present moment. Then, with a strong activation of your pelvic floor, allow yourself a deep breath in. And as you exhale, softly open the eyes. Now, we'll practice extending the arms. Inhale, bring arms out to a T-shape and just give me a big reach. Let it feel nice and easy as you spread the shoulder blades away from each other and then we'll do little arm circles. Just kind of go rounding forward, forward. Let's do a few more. That looks really good. Okay, come on back to neutral. And then we'll spread in the other direction. So just start rolling, rolling, rolling. Nice and easy in that opposite direction. Hold it. Then turn the palms up and elevate the hands just a little bit to kind of make a wide V shape with the arms. Expanding the chest and feel your ribs lifting away from the hips. And then exhale, we'll drop the hands down, give it a little shake. Let's release the neck. Exhale, drop your head over to the left side. Take that right arm and drop it down and just kind of roll your neck out. And you should find some nice little spots that need a little extra attention. Roll into it, you can lean a little over. You can add your hand in, whatever feels right for you. Come on back to the center, a little shake out. We're gonna pop on over to the other side. So drop the head over to the right, left arm down. Find those sweet spots. Add your hand in when that's appropriate. And come on back in. So we sort of store so much tension in the neck and it feels so nice to give space to the shoulders and space to the neck. Now we're gonna pop on over to the hands and knees. I want you to come on over onto your hands and knees. Gripping your fingertips, rooting down into the heels of the hands, we'll go for what's called cat and cow. So when you inhale, extend the spine, lift the head up and lift the sitting bones up. Exhale, round the back, let's pull it under. Two more times. Inhale, extend the spine, long deep breath in. Exhale, round and under. One more. Inhale, extend, deep breath in. Exhale, round and under. Relax your spine and now we'll practice puppy pose. So open your knees a little bit. You can keep the feet together. Walk your hands just a little bit forward and then exhale, place the forehead down and relax your shoulders. We'll hold this for about five breaths. Release through the shoulders, check in. And if you have a little more space, you can come up onto your fingertips. Come onto your fingertips and let the shoulder blades roll away from the spine. Take a moment here, feel breath, body and mind coming into unity in this moment. In these precious moments to feel that inner connection. Flatten the palms, let's lift the head up and you're gonna back it on up to a wide child's pose so you can sink your chest between your hands. Now, I've got two yoga blocks over here and if you find that it's a little bit straining to reach your chest down, you can reach your chest on the yoga block. And that might help you find a little more sense of ease when you release it down and drop the head down. And let's stay for a few breaths, nice and calm. 
Deep breath in, deep breath out. Easy does it. And let's stay for one more breath. And as you're here, really take this opportunity to connect again, breath, body, and mind. Feel what you feel with no judgment. All right, it's time to come out. Let's walk your hands back. Inhale, move your block on over to the side. Come back over to your hands and knees. Spread your fingers lightly apart, not too wide. We're spreading the roots of the fingers down. Curl your toes under. We're gonna come up to downward facing dog now. So we're gonna spread your shoulders open, draw the navel deeply in, and then inhale on up to downward facing dog. And as you come up to downward facing dog, really draw the navel in, rolling the shoulder blades away from the spine, and we'll stay for five breaths. One. If you need to bend the knees to bring your chest closer, you can do that. Two. Steady breathing. Three. Almost there. Four. And five, switch your gaze forward. Inhale as you step the right foot forward between the hands coming up on your fingertips. And then exhale, sink your left knee down. Point the left toes. Then inhale, gently come up. And as you come up, dangle your arms by your side for a moment. Just leave your arms here. Rotate the shoulders open. So you want to get a big spin of the arms open. Let that lift your chest and then inhale, reach your arms up and give yourself a big reach here. So your chest lifts up, the arms open. If it feels comfortable, keep the hands in line with the shoulders and really get that rotation of your arm bones. It'll feel like the elbows are spiraling towards each other. And if the elbows do reach towards each other, press your palms, gently gazing up. If that's comfortable, you might be able to interlock your fingers behind your head and give a big reach. And this crescent lunge pose in yoga is called Anjanayasana, one of the names of Hanuman. Stay for another breath. Feel that sense of expansion through the rib cage, and then exhale, drop the hands down. Come on to your fingertips. Let's curl the left toes under. And then I want you to lift your back leg up off the ground and come up into kind of a lifted lunge. And this next movement's gonna be a little hard, but I want you to try it. Turn that left foot out. And you might wanna scoot the right one back and then come down again. And this is the foundation of warrior one. And your right thigh might be burning. It's okay, right thigh, that's all right. Press into the ground, rotate the arm bones open, and again, and inhale, raise the arms. Steady your breath. Lift up along the center line and really root down into your back leg. Try to orient your chest forward as much as possible. We'll stay for two more breaths and work those hand positions, palms into each other, or interlock fingers, reaching powerfully up. And then drop your hands by your side. Straighten out that right leg. Good. Now, keeping that right hip joint externally rotated, the navel draws in. Roll in through that right hip joint. And this is the triangle pose. Now, in the triangle pose, when you reach your hand down, you might feel like, wow, my hand can't reach the ground. Not a problem. Grab one of those yoga blocks. Set it up on the outside of your foot. And then when triangle pose comes, you can place that right hand down. Lift your left arm up. Stack the shoulders in line with each other. And then really get that deep rotation back. So you really feel your shoulder blades moving down the back. And watch to make sure that you're not hanging or hinging in any of your joints. Instead, keep the muscles very activated around your hip joints, around your knees. It's looking really good, this triangle pose. Your gaze tries to be up at the left fingers, but if that's too stressful or feels uncomfortable, you can just gaze anywhere that's comfortable. Could be straight ahead, could be slightly forward. But the idea is to take one gazing point and stay with it. Okay, let's drop that left arm down. Inhale, come up, and we're just gonna pivot around to the other side, and we're gonna go through that whole sequence. So exhale, drop your right knee down, point the toes. 
Now remember, this is Anjanayasana, so we got that crescent lunge, which helps open up the front of the hip. Now, dangle the arms, draw the navel in, rotate the arm bones out so that expands the chest. Your shoulder blades are dropping down the back, and then inhale, raise the arms. The arms lift powerfully up and hold it there for a moment. Remember, you're not so much pushing down into the knee as you are extending all the way back through your right toes. So if you feel any undue pressure in the knee, try to lift up a little bit or grab something soft and place it underneath your knee. If it's comfortable for you, your palms can press into each other or you could interlock the fingers to accentuate the back bend. We hold it for another moment. Almost there, avoid squeezing the glutes. So there can be a pattern of squeezing the glutes to look for a little more activation, but see if you can let that go. And drop your hands down. And now we're gonna curl the toes under. So this is a little hard. You need to put the hands down to do this. You can put the hands down. We pick that back leg up, turn the foot out. You can just move that block a little over to the side. Turn the foot out and watch the hip because the hip wants to go out with the foot, but you're going to turn the hip forward. You can pull that left knee back a little bit and we've got that foundation of warrior one, Virabhadrasana A. External rotation of the shoulders, arms reach up. So now it's your left thigh that's burning. My thigh is burning too, so I'm with you. We stay for a few breaths, nice and easy, breathing, reaching. If you want to deepen it, your palms into each other. Deepen it a little more, we interlock the fingers, we reach back, almost there, and exhale, hands down, straighten up that left leg, bring the right foot in just a little bit, and now for triangle pose on the left side, draw the left hip back, so you want to use your hip joint, don't be afraid of folding into the hip joint, we're trying to get mobilization and flexibility in the hip joint. Then, rooting down into the bases of your big toes, navel is in, extend arms. Reach for your yoga block if you're gonna use it. Get it on the outside of the foot, pressing the hand down, and then inhale, extend the right arm. So you wanna find that both shoulder blades really drop down the back, and we'll hold for a few breaths. The triangle pose is one of the most therapeutic asanas in the yoga practice. You're going to really make sure you're working properly by activating the muscles around all your joints and really cycling the breath deeply in and the breath deeply out. So you allow yourself to feel and breathe, feel and breathe, almost there. Gaze is up towards the right fingers and just take a moment and make peace with this very moment with whatever pleasure whatever pain might be present. And then exhale, let's drop that hand down. You're gonna push off of the block, maybe a little bend in the knee, come all the way up, spread the arms. Exhale, take your hands on the waist. As we move hands to the waist and try to get to your natural waist, all the way up around the navel, inhale, lift the chest up, and then exhale, pivot forward, taking the hands down. This is called Prasarita Parottanasana, or wide leg forward fold. Taking the hands gently down, inhale, expand the chest, a nice big reach up, and then exhale, you're gonna drop your head down, so you're gonna round the back and drop the head down. Allow yourself a moment here. Now's a good chance to move the blocks out of the way. And just relax for a few breaths. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Keep it nice and calm as you lean forward. Activate the inner thighs a little bit to make sure you're not pushing into your ankles. Don't worry if your head doesn't touch the floor. All right, so you could be like hanging up here or your head could be pointed towards the ground. It just depends on how much flexibility you have. Flexibility is not the determination of whether you're practicing yoga. If you're here and breathing and feeling, that's enough. Okay, let's inhale, lift the head up, deep breath in. Exhale, walk your feet in and come down to a squat and sit all the way down. Open the feet. This kind of continues this position of uh, Prasarita Parottanasana, except now that we're seated, this begins to be what's called the Upavishta Konasana pose. This could be useful to grab a yoga block now. So as you grab your yoga block, position it out in front, maybe a little further, and then point your feet. Exhale, fold forward, 
placing the elbows down and we'll hold this for about five breaths. After you hold this position for five breaths, we'll take it a little deeper, but let's just get comfortable here. All right, so deep breath in, deep breath out. Feel your body. Another deep benefit, stretching out those inner thighs, which can get so tight, so filled with tightness, with tension. I, for one, squeeze my inner thighs a lot. I don't know why. Somehow it's a stress reaction. So postures like Upavishta Konasana are deeply healing. So as you go deeper, we can swing a little to one side, swing a little to the other side, and then you might be able to rest your chest on the block. You might need to bring your feet a little closer for this. I want you to find out what's appropriate for you. So you need to wiggle the feet a little closer. If your chest reaches on the block, you can reach your hands over to your feet. And this will give you kind of a nice little floor to end on there with the block. And we'll hold that for a few breaths. You can put the head down on the block. Of course, if you don't need the block, you're also welcome to pop that on over to the side and then you can just come on down. But that could take you many years of practice. Remember, I've been at this yoga business for more than 20 years. You wanna give yourself lots of time to practice. No rush, okay? All right, inhale, let's lift the head up and exhale there. Inhale, roll the spine up, bend your knees and give yourself a little hug. After the thighs have been opened like that, it can feel real nice just to come on in and do a little squeeze. All right, straighten out your legs. Dandasana position, the yogi staff pose. You're gonna pivot forward and again, big expansion of the chest. And as you expand the chest, let's try to reach out through the heels and you could do fingertips on the ground or hands flat. I'm feeling fingertips today. Hold it for a couple breaths, draw the navel in, feel the spine lifting up out of the pelvis. One more deep breath in and then gently pivot forward, holding on to your ankles or maybe holding on to your big toes. Inhale, long deep breath in. Exhale, fold. Five breaths. One. Two, just surrender, relax your head, shoulder blades back. Three, four, five. Inhale, straighten the arms, lift the head up, exhale here. Relax, point your feet for a moment, take your hands back. Now bend the knees. Feet flat, keep the knees about hips width apart. This is reverse tabletop position. So you're gonna shoot the pelvis forward. Inhale, push the pelvis up and forward and squeeze the navel in. Try to avoid squeezing the glutes right now. It's gonna be hard, but just avoid over squeezing because it'll push your knees outward and block up your lower back. Hold it for another moment. Internal rotation of the shoulders, expansion of the chest, and then exhale, easy down. Cross your feet underneath you. And now inhale up to a plank pose. Let's hold plank for five breaths. One, you didn't think you were gonna get through a practice with me without the plank, did you? Two, you know I love my planks. Three, navel is in and in. Four, and five, we'll keep it easy. Sink the knees down, exhale, chest all the way down. Roll the shoulder blades down the back, come up onto the elbows, point the feet. Stay for a couple breaths here, relaxing through the spine, lifting up through the center of the body, lifting up through the center of the head and enjoying this expansion. And then walk the hands back, roll shoulder blades back. Inhale up to upward facing dog. Exhale, sink the knees and lift the hips up to up downward facing dog. All right, we got our down dog. From downward facing dog, exhale, let's sink the knees down, cross your feet, and then exhale gently, sit down. Walk the feet forward, and then exhale, roll. Feel the muscles relaxing. Take a moment here in constructive rest. Constructive rest is a position where your sacrum is resting on the ground. 
the knees are spiraling towards each other and all of the muscles just melt into the ground. Now extend your left leg and draw the right knee up into your chest. After you draw the right knee up into the chest, then spiral over for reclining twist. Lift that right arm up and then exhale over. And we'll stay here for a few breaths. And just take a moment, release what needs to release. Relax what needs to relax. No fight, no force, easy does it. And inhale, come on back into the center. Now we'll switch the sides. Give it a little switch. Good. Squeeze it in. And exhale. Slide it over. Get your foot in a good position. Left arm spiral. Stay for a few moments. Release, relax. Release what needs to release. Almost there. Two more breaths. And inhale back to the center. Settle the sacrum down and let's take a little rest. Let the arms roll open, the legs roll open, keeping the mind and inwardly focused. So quiet and aware. Come to a moment where mind, body, and breath are all in alignment and feel that goodness emanating from your heart to cover your whole body. And then as you exhale, let's move fingers, toes, hands, and feet. Let's bend the knees and the elbows and give yourself a little squeeze in on the next exhale. Squeeze in. Thank your body. Hey, my body, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Roll the run. Try to find more comfortable. Then inhale. Come on up to a comfortable seated position. Close your eyes for a moment. Take these moments deeply into your heart. Feel the vibration of love, of kindness, of happiness, and of deep peace emanating outward from your heart as self-love, as unconditional love for yourself, and then unconditional love for all beings, and all things and the whole universe. Hands in prayer position. Om. As you exhale, softly open the eyes. Thank you so much for joining me on this practice. May you be happy, may you be peaceful, may you be filled with love. Namaste.